Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you today another video about technology and networking because this is a YouTube channel where you can learn about tech, networking, MDiscs, living in Israel, uh, marketing, and just about anything. The, my, my point is there really isn't a, a sort of theme for this YouTube channel yet. So if you do want to subscribe, I encourage anybody to subscribe using the default uh, subscribe system on YouTube so that YouTube's algor algorithm magic algorithm can do its work its magic and do some work to try to get videos in your feed for me that may be of interest to you because the amount of people who are interested in both living in Israel and MDiscs is already probably just me. Um, so for today's video I want to talk about um, what I call modular network design. The inspiration if you will for this video I was uh, I'm going on a trip soon to the United States the wonderful uh, USA my wife is American and I was telling her the, the few things I ordered from Amazon Prime because everything in Israel is uh, generally overpriced. So we use our trips to the US besides seeing in-laws uh, to get a couple of things that are much more expensive here and cheaper there. And one of the things I found was a um, access point from uh, TP-Link that I'd been meaning to sort of put into my network for a while. And my wife said, well, what's an access point? And I said, you know, it's a thing that's only purpose is to give out Wi-Fi. And she said, doesn't a router do that? And I said, it does. So I thought, hey, this might be interesting as a, as a, as a video um, to explain um, the advantages that come from separating network components. Now, before I uh, go into my little diagramming software here, draw.io, um, I want to make a point about technology in general. I remember many, many years ago, somebody came to my uh, high school uh, in Ireland and he, he was a kind of a, uh, innovation coach or something like that and his job was to try inspire students to, to consider uh, entrepreneurship as a career and stuff like that and he was talking about technology and he made this point just as kind of offhand point that's really stuck with me through the years and it was that technology tends towards integration so if you think about the smartphone for example and what a modern smartphone does a modern smartphone has a camera it's got a GPS system built into it. It's got, depending on the sensors and the exact model of the smartphone, it's got a digital compass, it might have a gyroscope, it's got NFC, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth. So modern smartphones are veritable computers, but they're actually, an, um, it's an integration of different components, right? We have a camera on our smartphone and it's not just a still camera, it's a video camera. Now the question is, is the camera on your smartphone better or worse than a standalone camera like a DSLR or mirrorless? And the answer is a no brainer, unless you have a freakishly good smartphone camera and a freakishly bad standalone camera, the camera on the phone is inferior. Likewise for all the other integrated components, the GPS, etc. And that's kind of what I'm trying to explain here with splitting up networks and why I bought an access point. It's not that you can't get those things in a less complicated fashion, it's that if you are, there's always a trade off between convenience and power. So if you go back to the smartphone example, why does technology tend towards integration and why do smartphones have these components? Because for most people, it's a lot easier to just carry around a smartphone and take casual photos than it is to bring around a camera and a smartphone. However, if you're a photographer looking to get the best possible photos, you will invest in a standalone camera and uh, if, you're a, if you're a serious hiker and you want a good GPS device, you'll buy a standalone GPS reader and so on and so forth. And it's the same thing with networking that if you're a casual home user, you might be just fine with the box. And I'll explain what the box is uh, briefly. But if you're trying to get a really, build a really, really strong home network, that's when uh, separating components tends to make sense. So with that intro out of the way, let me jump over to my uh, screen here and show you guys specifically what I'm talking about. I'm moving myself over to this corner. I like the bottom right corner today. Okay, so when most people think about the box, and this is the Wi-Fi box, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna use common, common language here, the Wi-Fi box or router, right? And what this is, and I, I don't need to show photos of a router, because pretty much everyone in this age has one of them sitting in their home. This actually contains a number of different components that used to be separated. So I'm gonna break down these components. It has firstly a modem. And the job of a modem is to provide, it's an interface between whatever internet connectivity is coming into your 
house and remember when you move apartment or you sign up for internet some dude from the ISP the internet company comes along and he uh, wires something into your wall and gives you another piece of hardware and you say okay everything's working so what's going on there is um, the last mile connectivity for the internet differs I've talked about the uh, global network of underseas cables before and it's a super fascinating subject in my opinion but that's not how internet actually gets to your home that's how internet travels around the world and then in order to get to A, B, C, D, E, F, people's homes and businesses, etc., cetera, um, we use a different uh, connectivity for last mile. Now, interestingly, we're seeing nowadays fiber optic internet uh, becoming more of a thing, not yet here in Israel. So in an interesting sort of technological uh, way, we're actually seeing the technology used to carry internet globally and locally becoming very, becoming very similar. However, up to now, the technology used to bring internet from the local uh, exchange to your house has been a file, final mile connectivity and in Israel we have surprisingly backwards internet we have VDSL and coaxial now VDSL is basically a modified version of something that was intended to carry phone conversation as in when people had you know um, physical physical phones in their house you probably remember those and coaxial was um, originally, if I'm not mistaken, designed for carrying cable television. So neither of these are actually optimized or really intended for bringing internet. So that's just an FYI. Now, because there's different types of last mile internet connectivity to get your internet giving device to talk to that outside network, you need a modem, uh, which can basically exchange, it can speak in the language of whatever infrastructure it's connecting to. So the modem can be uh, different types of modems. We have, you know, uh, VDSL modems, um, ADSL modems, uh, that is um, asynchronous DSL, and I forget what VDSL stands for. We have coax, and in more modern interfaces, we have, uh, I think it's F SPF um, or uh, fiber, basically, right? So that's the modem. Then the second thing you have is a ethernet router switch now the job of the of the router if you think about it it's actually very possible to wire up your own fully functional internet just using an internet router if you go into the settings of your router and this is again called the router when it's actually really a modem router if you go into the router settings you can actually disable um, external internet access and what could you do if you wanted to you could plug your one computer into one LAN port the Ethernet ports those yellow ones in the back of the router you could plug an NAS a, a, a file server into a second one and you could plug someone else's computer into a third one and if you really wanted to do this for whatever obscure reason you could download a local chat client that only worked over the local internet and talk to the person in the other side of the building um, and even set up a little internet if you wanted to. Now, almost no one does this because the internet is and cloud storage is where everything is stored these days, but technically it's possible. So when we put these, these two components together, the modem and the router, we get a, a system that can both trade packets, exchange information, I'm trying to keep the language relatively simple, external, uh, internally within the network, give each local uh, client on the network its own address, and then the modem is, um, is interfacing between uh, the router as it's called nowadays and the outside internet so that people on the local network are able to actually view websites okay so this would be a uh, I just need to put this up here and there will be a vertically flowing arrow so that's uh, kind of how your average local internet network is structured these days it's a flow chart from um, the router uh, which contains multiple components through to the internet now what about Ethernet so there's also another thing built into the Wi-Fi router and I'll need to actually draw arrows down here because I'm super pedantic about this to uh, diagram this accurately and th this the wireless routers also have an access point if you have a wireless uh, client like most people would use the internet nowadays let's say through a laptop I'm one of the old-school freaks on desktop that laptop is connecting to the router uh, over Wi-Fi. Now, technically, I don't think it's even ac technically accurate to call that a built-in access point, but this is just to explain in a more sophisticated network diagram what a access point does. Now, imagine you're in your average home, right? 
there's no reason to have the modem, the Ethernet route, and the access point separated. In fact, it's much more convenient for most consumers if they are all in one box. That's why I said I'd explain what box means. Um, but in let's say you're in JFK Airport and you want to um, set up a Wi-Fi network for the whole passengers in the terminal, the hundreds of thousands of people passing through the terminal every day. Do you think in JFK Network there's like a single router sitting in someone's office that's serving you know tens of thousands of people in the airport? Of course not. And what happens in airports and enterprises and larger network deployments are access points. And there won't just be one access point. The kind of distinctive feature of access points is that they are very good at speaking to one another and forming into one what looks like one network to uh, your average user. So you're gonna have one AP and they're all kind of talking to one another to form one network. So that's how big networks work. Now the advantage of doing this in a home network, your average home internet user is going to be best served with uh, the, the box, the Wi-Fi router that they get from their ISP. It's got a modem, it's got a, uh, it's got a router, it's got a built-in access point. It does everything and everything comes from there. However, there are situations where doing the split up the components approach actually makes sense. One of the advantages here is that internet technology tends to evolve. So maybe if you have the modem built into the modem router, which most folks call a router, if your uh, internet service provider changes over from VDSL to fiber, you need to get yourself a new router. Um, and that's not a concern for most people because most people with internet service contracts the ISP issues a router and you get and you know you kind of uh, get what they give you but if you wanted to really take control of your network by separating out the hardware you're able to just change one component at a time so if you go tomorrow uh, from um, VDSL to fiber you can swap you can upgrade your uh, modem and then you can have your own wired router and so long as the ports are strong enough to support the faster connectivity that's no problem you just maybe need to change a few settings but you only need to change this part of the hardware now the bigger advantage i would say actually comes in the realm of access points the problem with the the box is that the place you broadcast your wireless internet from your wi-fi is co-located with where the box sits and where does the box sit in my experience living in ireland and israel it's typically wherever the isp guy can connect the internet to your house so because you, you have to have from the point you have to have a cable attached to the box and from there if you're broadcasting so that point if you think about your average home where would be the best point or points to broadcast a wi-fi network from it might be very very far away from where the box is located the box is located upstairs and in an ideal situation you, you like to work downstairs on the kitchen table so you'd want to have the place where that wi-fi network's broadcast uh, probably somewhere in the center of the house so that everyone gets kind of equal access or better yet have a couple of APs and that's why APs um, are advantageous. Now this is not the same thing as mesh networking or even mesh with Ethernet backhaul. It's slightly different and this is considered the gold standard really for home Wi-Fi networks if you can do this and to do this you really need to own your property because uh, unless you have a very flexible landlord they tend not to like their tenants doing stuff like drilling holes through walls in order to run ethernet cabling throughout the, throughout the house. But if you're lucky enough to own your own place, you could go from your router and split off a bunch of APs. They even make outdoor APs. So let's call this AP4 outdoor AP. And outdoor APs are weatherproof and they can uh, you know, survive um, uh, you know, rain and wind and stuff like that. And you don't even need to get power uh, to them if you have uh, POE, that's power over ethernet. So this is where, so I, ho I hope this little diagramming effort has explained the value in separating out the network components. If my wife ever wants to sit through a 15 minute video to learn why I bought an AP, it's for this reason. I already have a separate ethernet network, but for my AP currently I'm using a router in AP mode and I wanted an actual standalone device that was intended to work as an AP. If anything, just for um, physical reasons because APs tend to they have uh, ceiling fixtures. You can put them on your the top of your house. And that's something if you get into networking, when next time you're traveling through an airport, you will notice, you'll begin noticing APs uh, in the wild. You'll see them in libraries. You'll see them in airports. They're typically just white boxes mounted on the wall. They're not very conspicuous. Uh, but if you recognize the brands, you begin to recognize what they are. And that's how 
a ne an airport like O'Hare or JFK or any network, any airport for that matter, runs their network. They don't broadcast from a box that would be just impractical. No one could use the internet unless they're very close to that little area. So what they do instead is they separate the, separate out the components, um, especially on the Wi-Fi front. And by the way, there's nothing stopping you from using your Wi-Fi router. You don't need to separate out the modem if you don't want to, if you're happy with cutting down on the hardware a little bit, you can have your standard ISP issued router and just run an AP. It would be better if you're doing so to disable the Wi-Fi on the router because then you're gonna risk creating conflicts. You don't need a second Wi-Fi network. So just turn off the Wi-Fi on the ISP router um, and run it all from your APs. And there's various ones on the market from Ubiquity, uh, TP-Link uh, and a bunch of other providers. Uh, you can find them for sure on Amazon or Newegg or any of the other usual suspects. Hope that video is useful if you're interested in home networking and you wonder why sometimes it's better. Uh, these are the reasons I hope I made them clear. Thank you guys for watching and if you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel using the default subscribe feature. Have a great day.